Well, everyone, thanks for joining me for today's Lunch and Learn. I'm Keith Armour. I'm the Education Homework Support Manager. Well, April is Poetry Month, so let's get ready for poetry. We have a huge collection, and we are bringing back our 24th annual Poetry in the Garden in person this year. We also have a poetry workshop. So let's go ahead and take a deep dive into Poetry Month. All right, since it is National Poetry Month, I thought a great place to start would be with this blog post that was written at the very end of March. And this highlights um, a couple of things. Uh, number one, it highlights our own writer in residence, uh, Pauletta Hansel, and she is our um, writer in residence, and she's also a poet. Um, and she is the 2022 uh, writer in residence. And what she did in this episode of uh, Inside the Writer's Head is she talks to uh, several po poets right here, this group of poets right here, this whole group of poets. Um, but she talks to the third, Ohio's third poet laureate, uh, uh, Gunter Seymour. And they talk about how they um, put their newest project together, which is I Thought I Heard a Cardinal Sing. And of course, you can listen to a preview of uh, the episode here, but to listen to it, you need to either go on to Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. Um, and then you see the names of the poets that she's going to talk to in this particular podcast. And What's great is our collection uh, in our catalog, we've already put some of these items here. Uh, now they're working right now on that um, anthology, but these are some of the books and some of the poems that you can check out right now, okay? Um, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about the Writer in Residence program in just a few, but I wanna come up here and using keyword, we're searching the catalog keyword, and I'm going to type in poetry. So when I type in poetry, of course, it gives me some suggestions here, but I'm just going to hit search. And when you first see it, it's going to come up with 22,000 results. Now, and of course you can look, here's poetry starting from scratch, a two week lesson plan for teaching poetry writing. And this is all about the subject, uh, this is all about the keyword using poetry. Now that might not be what I wanna do, okay? So I'm gonna go back up here and instead of changing this, I'm gonna change from keyword to subject. The subject is poetry and I search again, and then I see 18,774 items. And you'll notice that here is a brown girl dreaming, here is the poems call us, uh, what, uh, call us what we carry, and that is poems by Amanda Gorman, who was the wonderful poet laureate who read at the inauguration a brand new poem that she had uh, written for the occasion. You see um, uh, Pauletta Hansel's poem, uh, her, her book that she put together, and that was published in 2022 here. And then there's other poems that are here as well, okay? Now, I do wanna point out, don't forget when you have such a huge result over here, it's always good to think about, well, what format? How do I want to read these poems? Do I want to read them as a book? Do I want to read them in an ebook? Do I want to uh, choose an audiobook? I really like to read poems out loud, but I also like to do that in the privacy of my own home. <laughs> um, and also, um, I might want to listen to someone read their own poems uh, because their inflection and their tone and their volume just really uh, might change the meaning of the poem itself. Um, but the other way that you might want to check it out is audience. If you click right here under audience, you'll see that if I just want to read or listen to poems uh, for adults, there's 16,000 here. And if I click here, automatically it regenerates the whole thing. And I'm just looking at poems 
with adults in mind. Now I can clean the filters, but I, what I really want to do is just go back to the main list. There it is again. And if I go down here under audience again, and I just click on children, then I'm going to see all these poems that are for children in our collection. Now, the other thing, and I'm just going to click out there as well. So that's the whole 18,774. And I'm going to go under publish date. Now, you'll notice that in 2022, so far, we have added to our collection 136 items when it comes to the subject of poetry. So you can always go back if you're thinking, oh, I can't remember the name of that, but I know it was published in 2020. That is a great way to narrow it down as well. You can even go to ratings. I don't use that very often, but if you're really looking for a top rated one there, and also you can go to reading level. If you're looking for a poem for especially children, there's a beginning reader right here. That's another great way to look at it. All right. So don't forget about changing this from keyword. Obviously, if you know the title of a book, type that in or the author that will help you out. But the subject is a good place to start as well. So we're going to go back here to the main page. I'm going to go to stream and download over here on the left. And I'm going to once again point out that Libby and Overdrive are the same thing. But when it comes to um, looking at it online, I like to look at Overdrive in the browser on my computer. I do want to point out um, also it does not have to do with National Poetry Month, but the big library read is great because everyone can uh, read this book. And this is from Questlove, um, who is uh, a wonderful documentarian because he just wrote, he just won the Oscar uh, for his documentary on the Summer of Soul. And um, I think I know we have that in our collection, but um, this is a book about music history and music is history. And uh, that's a thing that you can check out all the way through April the 18th without any wait lists or holds. So check that out. Now we're going to go up to subject and we're going to go, we're under fiction and we're going to scroll right here to poetry. And this is another way to look at our collection. And because we're such a large library system, we have a huge selection of OverDrive and Libby items. Now, once again, you can look over here. You can just do available now and see where it says wait list. When I click available now, all of this says available, 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 available. And I can check out all of those here, okay? If I want to look at a book, uh, look at a selection of poetry, uh, primer for poets and readers of poetry. If I click here, of course I can look at the summary of what the book is about, but I can also read a sample. And it's usually the beginning of the book, it tells you what it's going to be about. And then this one's a little different because this is, does not actually have some poems in it. And so that's like, mm, that's not quite what I want to do. I want to actually read a book that has some poems in it. I click here and I can see the publisher's note, the dedication, and then I can start seeing some poetry. Oh, there we go. Good. And go to the intro. Oh, didn't get to it. All right, but that's the great way sometimes to see if you're going to be interested in that particular title. Once again, I can change it by audience if I want to uh, general uh, adult or mature adult as well. Now, if I go over here to the kids section, click here, I can see that I could go to their subjects. And once again, go under here to poetry, which is 359. And these are all age appropriate poems that are here, that are, that are poems. And look at this one right here together. 
and then read the poem. You can read a sample and scroll through. You can see the beautiful pictures that are part of that book. Okay. So definitely check that out. Um, that is a great way to look at uh, the items and check them out and download them right away. Now I'm going to go to Hoopla. Now Hoopla, we're going to come up here and we're just going to type in poetry. Okay. Now, of course, I can look at it different ways. I can look at the titles. I can look at the series. But I'm just going to type in poetry and hit search. And you'll notice there's 17,119 results for poetry here. I can, of course, look at the format. These are ebooks, audiobooks, music, movies, and television. I can also look at just children's titles. So if I click here on children's titles, I can see uh, there's 677 um, po uh, items for poetry, and you have a lot of them here. Look right here, rhyming, poetry and rhyme collection, and that's from Highlights Magazine. If I grow, go right here to the browse section, if I scroll through, I do want to point out two things here. And they've moved it on me, so I'm going to just go to ebook because I know it's definitely there. There's a motivational and inspiration, and sometimes that's a good thing to read, especially if you're feeling a little down, and that's why poetry is so great. And here's Poetry Month for Kids Here and the wonderful Shel Silverstein. When I taught school, Every week we would have a new poem uh, and the kids learn the poem and they also learned a lot of great things about uh, fluency and tone and, and uh, just a great way to really get into poetry that way. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our main page, but I'm going to go under events. And in events, I'm going to see that there's writer in residence. And the Library Foundation has been sponsoring writer in residence for several years now. And you can read all about Pauletta Hansel here. Uh, and she's an author of nine poetry collections. And her most recent was Friend, Cool Town, Photograph, um, and some of her other ones here. Here are um, some other blog posts that you might want to check out. Here is that episode. And remember, uh, it's not going to be the complete episode. You'll have to listen to it through another way. Here's all the information about uh, the wonderful Library Foundation's writer and residence. And if you want to go to the Library Foundation website, you can click here. Here are the, we've had one, two, three, four, five, six writer in residence. Uh, we did have um, uh, we did have one writer uh, during the pandemic that stayed around uh, for two years. And here's where the funding takes place. And then here's information and the names of the selection committee as well that helps out. Here are books by our writers in residence. Now, granted, they're not going to be all poem poetry. Um, I think um, Pauletta is the first one who's uh, totally a poet, um, but you can definitely check it out. She has office hours. No, this one is happening. This already happened here, but she does have a writer in residence office hours and she'll help you. Let's just click on that. And she has this periodically. So you bring your questions on, on how to put your ideas together, or maybe you're having a challenge and she's going to help you. Um, uh, she has expertise in poetry and memoir, um, and she welcomes writers in all genres. And then if I go back one more, there is a poetry workshop that's happening next week. Next week is going to be a busy week at Clifton when it comes to poetry because uh, from 4.30 to 5.30, there's a poetry workshop, My Letter to the World, and um, Pauletta is going to be um, uh, in, charge of the, in charge of that. And uh, you can either, poems may be shared during the open mic session. Uh, that follows, and that's the Poetry in the Garden program. So if you want to come 
and um, kind of learn how to write a poem, definitely want to register for that. I'm going to click back back and go to the 24th annual Poetry in the Garden. And that is a, uh, a wonderful event. It's now back in person, uh, but it's the 24th annual. It is going to take place in Clifton instead of the main library because currently our South Building uh, where we would have this program is being uh, renovated uh, for the next generation. Uh, but here uh, over at Clifton and the Clifton branch, if you have not been to the Clifton branch, it is a former mansion of Boss Cox, who was a big political uh, influencer in the early 1900s, but it's been completely renovated into a wonderful library. Um, you want to check that out. But uh, the uh, Poetry in the Garden will take place from 6 to 8.30 at the Clifton Branch next April the 12th. All right, I hope that you enjoy uh, Poetry Month. Let me click out and tell you a few more things. All right, a huge collection, um, over 18,000 uh, books on poetry and how to write poetry and all sorts of different things. Please come attend in person the 24th annual Poetry in the Garden over at Clifton and of course our poetry workshop. I'll see you next time for another Lunch and Learn.